Hey there everyone, I'm Dust Bunny Avenger, and if you're new to the channel, welcome to Slackers Undercover. If you like what you see, don't forget to slap that like button, bash that big old subscribe button, and tickle that little bell icon to make sure you never miss out on any of the awesome. Hello everyone, Dust Bunny Avenger here from Slackers Undercover, and welcome to something very special. Honestly, I should have had this recorded weeks ago. Uh, it's just been an unfortunate series of events around here between my illnesses, my girlfriend being sick, my mother-in-law being in the hospital. It's just been whew, it's been a rough start for everyone this new year. Hopefully all the troubles are past, we can move on with our lives, so here we are. So, huge thank you to Armand Sandu of Frostwood Interactive, a one-man indie studio, for reaching out and giving us a chance to experience this. Sorry again for the delay. I'm going to say, sometimes life is just life. It looks at your plans and laughs at you. So this is Rain Swept. Helps Detective Stone unravel the death of a couple in a small town. Is it as simple as it appears, or is there something afoot in the neighborhood? Featuring an emotionally captivating story, a wide cast of characters, and a soundtrack by Mike Kamek, who I might add is behind the music of such titles as Downfall, The Cat Lady, and Lorelei, which are three fantastic games themselves. Check them out if you haven't. So, uh, this is just me rambling, just because I mentioned Mike Kamek. I, I actually studied music composition in college myself. I almost got a degree in it. Uh, one of my last courses required me to play an instrument I didn't know, and broke college student, I couldn't afford lessons. But where I'm going with this is one of the strongest tools in your arsenal to incite an emotional reaction. The response from your audience is sound. The music, the rhythm, the beat, it is just, it, it's, it's, you have to have it. You know, that's what makes a horror movie a horror movie. If you see cheesy graphics jump out, that's nothing. But the dun 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 that is what makes it scary. So I'm, I'm getting way off topic, I apologize. <laughs> what else is new? Dust Bunny off topic? No. Now, fair warning, like the thing says, the game contains references to topics such as suicide and trauma, which some players may find distressing. So if that's not your thing, if that's a trigger for you, if that's not something that you want to watch, just skip through. Don't watch this one. Some of the stuff I, I already checked out a little bit previous. It it gets deep into this uh, detective's mind on the edge of his own insanity. You know, don't put yourself in a predicament that's going to mess you up. I don't want you guys to do that. So, fair warning. But let's get into it. I'm excited. I have to readjust the sound because it cranked back up on me. Okay, right there. <laughs> we'll play with it in post. Alright. Monday, 12.14 a.m. October 7th, 1996. Good year. Not a good year for some people. really coming down if I don't catch a cold again I dig that he's the, the classic detective style you know trench coat gruff scruff non shaved I've seen some stuff kind of detect I mean you'd imagine they see some really 
crazy wild stuff. Alright, E, enter, left mouse button to interact with things. Okay. Then use the arrow keys of the mouse to select further options. Alrighty. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Look at right. Okay, it might actually show me stuff. Skip pretty speed. Dialogue, inventory's up. Look at. That's my car. I don't want to use my car. I just got here. Oh. I gotta figure out how to back out of stuff. Oh, okay. I just got here. I'm not going back now. Okay. Oh, I can't move. Alright. Oh. They've been here a while, it looks. Now, why would I do that? I can't use their car. Can I talk to you, buddy? Terrible. What'd you say? I can't hear you over the rain. I said terrible, terrible business all this. That was only a matter of time, you know that. The way inside. What do my chief send me all the way to Pineview for this case? I know, they were still so young. Only one way to find out. Young and stupid, you mean? The stories I've heard. It's the way in. What, dude? Should take a look around here before heading in. I guess you're right. It was just a matter of time. Okay, they're just on repeat now. The crowd is too close for the crime scene. The number of cops are few. This is poor. They really are. Now, what's he up to? Also... Open window. Hmm. Oh, wrote that down. Open window. Ma'am, please, you need to back away a little. What happened here? A murder? Johnny, get under the umbrella. Granny, I want to leave. It's really cold. Can we go back to the shop now? We could all see this coming a mile away. Ma'am, please. Granny, please. All right, Johnny. There's no point in standing here now. I knew this would happen. We, we should have done something. Nothing we could have done. Chris did this, I'm sure of it. It does look like that, doesn't it? Detective Stone, right? The chief is inside. They've been waiting for you. There's a number of mouse keys to select dialogue options. I only have one dialogue option. And you control the other crowd, officer. And you push the crowd away from the scene, officer. What? You have to speak up. I can't hear you over the rain. This is becoming a trend. The crowd! Handle them! There could be evidence out here! We can't have the crowd trampling all over the evidence! Oh, yeah, I'm trying. Fire your gun off. Just like, get back! Hey, hey, Williams! What the hell are you doing? I'm trying to prop up this tape, sir. It won't stay. Well, get some sticks and drive them in. Yes, sir. Richard! Don't call for Richard. Richard's on leave. Do it yourself. <laughs> Goodness. I detected the thing is we were short on manpower here. We weren't prepared for this kind of thing. First time in decades. And to top it off, all this rain. Just get the crowd under control. I'm heading inside. Yes, detective, don't worry. Richard, I, I mean Williams. And you don't remember who's on you gotta remember who's on leave. Aren't you in charge here? Bah. Ninkum poops, everyone. There's nothing over here. Looks like something right here under the bush. I don't trust that bush. Bush, I'm coming back for you. I walk stiff. And out of my trench coat a little bit, but it's fine. I'm rough and tough. It's okay. Can I use this now? Hmm, should I go in? Yeah, I yeah, go in. I feel like we got the open window already. I, I don't know what else we could have seen. Point and hang around here. Woo! You like watching CSI? Oh God. As the sheriff, I should talk to him first. I, I, I'm getting a, a vibe from that one guy from Supernatural, and I, I'm sorry. I should talk to him first. Michael? Huh? Whoa. I think everyone's looking at you, man. 
Ah! Detective, are you okay? Seems to have slipped on those three blood clots to the ground. I think so. Guess I'm a little tired after a long drive here. Living off of whiskey and cigarettes. Um, okay, if you say so. Detective Stone, right? The head office called in to say you'd be joining us here for this investigation. I'm Sheriff Harris. This is Officer Watts. We appreciate the department sending help, but um, I don't think we'll need it. This case is ready to be wrapped up. What do we have here? The victims here are Christopher Green, age 26, died from a bullet wound to the head. Looks self-inflicted. And Diane Miller, age 24, a single bullet wound to the abdomen. The victims live together. We're unmarried. Hmm. Any signs of an intruder? Any signs of an intruder? No signs of forced entry. Door was locked from the inside when we arrived. You know, except the window was open. Ah, uh, an officer climbed through the open window here to open the door. There were no footprints outside the window. Uh, except the officers. He was careful. No signs of struggles or marks on the bodies either. Time of death? What was the time of death? According to the next door neighbor, a single gunshot was heard around 0, 1500 hours. Received the call at about 020 hours, and we were in here in another five minutes. Found them dead upon arrival. Confirmed the timing. What do we know about the weapon? Both shots were fired from a 38 caliber special revolver. The ballistics report will let us know more. Uh, any witnesses? Just the next door neighbor who claims to have heard a single gunshot. We can interview him shortly. Wouldn't there be three, uh, two gunshots, excuse me? Any questions? Honestly speaking, Detective, we think it's pretty obvious what take, what's taking place here. What do you mean? They had a reputation. They weren't exactly a happy couple. The whole town knows this. Diane was shot at point-blank range with Chris's gun, probably by Chris. He then went ahead and shot himself as the wound is clearly self-inflicted. So, you see, sending you here unnecessarily complicates things. Remain silent. It's obviously a case of murder suicide, Detective. So everything's figured out already? So you got it all figured out or everything already, huh? If that was sarcasm, I'd ignore it, but yes, more or less. I, uh, uh, are you suggesting there was domestic violence involved? It would seem so. It was never reported, but it doesn't mean it didn't happen. So, rumors? You may call it that, but, uh, where there's smoke, there's fire. Damn it, man! We do deal with facts, not rumors. I'm not sure that we're never able to fit in this town. They were new here, moved in about six months ago. Never got out much, didn't make any friends. You don't need to analyze the obvious, Detective. That would only be inefficient. This is Officer Blunt. She will assist you through the course of your work here. Hello, Detective. And uh, one more thing. We're, we're looking to wrap this case up quickly and cleanly. We don't want to drag it out if it can be helped. We have an important festival coming around in a week's time. So you might say this is uh, bad timing. For who? Is it bad timing for you, Sheriff? There's no need to go around complicating things, alright? Just give me a story that works and we can close this case quickly. I'm sarcastic reply, because I don't like what you're in 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 inciting here. I mean... Well, just wrap it up. We got a festival coming. That's way more important than finding out what actually happened here. You know, it seems obvious. They killed each other. They end. Yeah, sure. Can't wait to wrap this case up. Uh, yeah. I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Okay, then. Uh, anyway. Have a look around the room if you like. Come talk to me when you're done. I don't trust you. Your, sh your shifty eyes. Your blank expression watching you. Right. What we got? Gun? Do we have Spidey Sense? 38 caliber special. As Officer Watts said, it looks pretty old. You can hold six rounds. It's a revolver, so it shouldn't have ejected shell casings. It should still be in the barrel. There are three unused rounds still in here and three spent shell casings. This means three rounds were fired from this gun at some point of time. If two were fired last night, where's the third? Or was it shot last night or some other day? 
This gun, gun belonged to Chris, according to Officer Watts. Let's assume Chris or Diane weren't the ones to use it. Is there anyone else here that could have known they kept the gun? From Pineview? I really doubt it. Remember, no signs of forced entry. Could it be someone they were comfortable with? Or trusted? No, no one that I can think of. Hmm. 38 special rounds. It's a box of 50 rounds. There are 44 here, which means 6 are missing. 2 were used last night. There are 3 loaded in the gun, as we saw earlier. Two were shot last night, there's still one unaccounted for. Was that shot last night too, or some other day? Is there another person dead here? Are you lying to me? Tell me the truth! Oh, we got something else here. Red wine, it looks like a new bottle opened yesterday. No one drank from this glass. It would seem that Chris was sitting by himself at the table and drinking wine, waiting for someone to join him. Probably Diane? Whether he was waiting for her or someone else, we don't know yet. A glass of wine was knocked over. This looks like wine, but there seems to be blood in here as well. How did blood splatter in this direction? It just doesn't make sense. Those drops of blood fill out a place too. Officer Blunt, I think there's been more than two gunshots that we're seeing here. Can't they test the residue on the gun? Wouldn't they know that? Oh yeah, small town cops. They wouldn't. Because small town. What we got here? Hmm, what's this? It's signed, Chris, 96. I'm guessing Chris built some of the furniture around this house. Hmm. Nope, not talking to you. Gunshot to the stomach. The damage and residue would suggest the shot was taken at point blank range. That rules out the possibility of her being shot from the open window. She would have been in line of sight from the outside, though. There's no mistaking it. The perpetrator would have been be inside the house to cause this kind of wound. Whether that was Chris or someone else, it's hard to say at this moment. Alright, let me just do another run through. I don't know how much of, like, talking to things looking at things, I unlock other things to talk to. Not yet. I will talk to you. I should look around a bit more before moving on from here. Really? I mean, okay. Already, unless other options have popped up. Oh, I can use it. Oh, I already used that. Oh, I didn't see that. I guess we got a mouse kind of over it. Bullet wound to the head. The skull is badly damaged. Most of the side has been blown off. His body position, the way he fell, would indicate that he's sitting sideways in the chair, facing where Diane's body is now. The angle of the shot indicates that he was shot from this side. If someone shot him, they were standing in front of the refrigerator. No clues here, though. Could have been shot from the window. At that moment, it's shut. Must get a check for fingerprints and footprints outside. Could someone have entered and left through here? We should have the fingerprint results in a couple days, Detective. Don't forget, there aren't any footprints outside. If someone shot him from outside, then Chris would have sat facing the refrigerator. That would make sense that way. The killer wouldn't need to enter the house. But in what? In that case, who shot Diane? Examine hand. Mm. Gunpowder residue on his right hand. How would you disagree with Officer Watts here? This is strong evidence for the victim shooting himself. Unless it was made to look that way. The chair's fallen on its back. Looks like Chris fell off the chair before or after being shot. I think that's everything. But see, even the you know, the footage we saw was it looked like someone standing shooting themselves, but I guess we can't be guaranteed that it's actually this guy either. Alright. I'm mouse around, because apparently I can mouse stuff. They maybe show me something different. No? Okay, are we are we all wrapped up? We done here? Yeah. Yeah, I'm done. Now let's have a chat with Mr. Willis outside. The rain's finally let up. 
no longer rain swept. Right, this is Mr. Willis. He lives right here next door. Coffee detective? Mm, yes, please. I'll just go for coffee. Yes, thank you. You can ask him any questions you, you may have about last night. Right, Mr. Willis. Can you tell me everything you saw or heard during last night's events? Well, see, I, I headed off to bed around 11, as I usually do, after a glass of whiskey. Helps me sleep, you know. Anyway, somewhere around 12, 15 a.m., I'd say, I was woken up by a loud bang. Ran in my bedroom window that looked straight down at their place. And what did you see? Nothing. The lights were on, but that's about it. Went to my phone and called Officer Watts here straight away. How long did it take you to get to the window when you heard the shot? Uh, about a couple seconds, Detective. Not more than five, I'd say. I nearly fell out of bed when I heard the shot, so you might say I was halfway there already. Did you see anyone? Did you see any sort of activity on the street? Anything unusual? No, Detective. Everything was exactly the same as always. Now, you said you heard a single shot. Yes, the whiskey usually knocks me out pretty good, so if there had been more, I didn't hear him. Do you live alone, Mr. Willis? Uh, yes, I do. Never got married. It's uh, it's a long story. One meant to be talk over a couple whiskeys. You know what I mean? <laughs> Can you confirm your whereabouts? Ah, uh, no. I was just at home. You, yeah, am, am I a suspect? It's a procedure, Mr. I know Mr. Willis. He's cool. React to the unprofessional is on display. We'll need to have a talk later, officer. Talk? About what? Just later, okay? Okay, Sherlock. Whatever you say, Holmes. Snicker. Did Chris and Diane have many visitors, friends, etc.? No, no. Not at all, in fact. In all this time, I only maybe saw Jack coming over to fix their car. Nah, people rarely ever visit them because they must have kept themselves. See, there are many friends here. Sometimes folks don't like those kinds either, so I, I, I really can't say. You know what I mean? No, please elaborate. You won't find anyone crying over their deaths here. Nobody really knew them. Never got out much. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us, Mr. Willis? I, I don't know if this is useful, but you might have heard about Chris and Diane. They looked pretty happy when they first moved in. More recently, though, I heard Diane crying a couple times, usually late at night. See, the, the whiskey knocks me out early, so maybe that's why I never heard all of this before, but a couple times I was up a little later. One night about a month ago, I heard pretty bad things. There were some loud sounds, like stuff being flung around and such, see? I heard someone crying. I was thinking to myself, maybe I should call the police, but then it quietened down all of a sudden. We never received any calls for domestic violence, but people often talk to stories like this kind. Can you remember what you heard uh, when you heard this, Mr. Willis? Uh, I was up late writing an important letter, so I think it was uh, somewhere between the 1st and 3rd last month. 1st, 3rd, September, all right. Anything else? No, that's all I know about this. Right. Thanks for your help, Mr. Willis. We'll be in touch if you need anything else. If we need anything else. No problem. Uh, thanks for the coffee. Cop coffee. It's tough, rough, and wakes you up. Probably has a little Irish in it. <laughs> so, Detective. You said what you wanted to have a talk later. Is now a good time? Yes, officer. Please don't tell witnesses they're not under suspicion. Especially not in front of them. So basically you're telling me that I don't know how to do my job. Is that it? All I'm saying is the case isn't all wrapped up as you'd like to believe. How could you not see this right in front of you? It's so obvious. Mr. Willis didn't see anything outside of the house after the gunshots. and There are no signs of anything for a century either. On top of that, considering how rough things were between the two of them, you heard what Mr. Willis was saying, right? Yeah, we don't know the complete picture yet. The amount of information we have as of now is very little. It's not the complete picture. We need to dig, dig deeper if we want to know the truth and not just confirm our assumptions. Well, what about the door, huh? How was it locked from the inside? Explain that. Well, you already said the window was open, man. I checked the door. It locks itself from the inside when you pull it close. Whether you pull it from the outside or push it from inside. I was like, oh. I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm saying there's no conclusive evidence yet. Well, fine then. Dig as deep as you like, Detective. You won't find anything new here. I was perfectly capable of handling this case myself, but of course the head department had to complicate things. In any case, Sheriff Harris will probably want to wrap up this case before the festival, so don't expect to wait for more than a week. I've had 
I have to head to the station now. Officer, escort Detective Stone to his hotel. Will do, sir. Good, I'm making enemies of the local PD. We'll come back in the evening search the house. Letters, diaries, that sort of thing. Alright. We can expect the autopsy results. Day after tomorrow, according to the coroner. But I'll confirm and let you know. I'm guessing there were more than two bullets shot last night. We should take another look around the kitchen to make sure. Three bullets, but... Hmm. We're actually glad that you're here, uh... You know, uh, although the sheriff and Officer Watts would rather not admit it. Even to themselves. This is like the first murder here in the last hundred years, so I, we have no idea how to deal with it. I mean... It's alright. It's alright, I know what you mean. I just joined the force a month back, for instance. And a murder already? I'm not sure if I'm ready. I kinda knew you could say... I. I kind of knew them, you could say. I, I, I never known anyone that's been murdered before, you know? It's, uh, kind of weird. A bit sad. I know as an officer, I'm not supposed to really feel that way at all. You'll be fine. Give me time. Thanks, Detective. Yeah, tell me about Chris and Diane. What do you know about Chris and Diane? Well, not much. It's mostly what Mr. Willis said earlier. Nobody really knew him. They came in here, kept to themselves. You hear stories about them. Everyone thought they were kind of weirdos. I admit, it's kind of agreed that, uh, with the sentiment, I, I feel bad about it now. I, there's no reason to make assumptions over people's character. Character can't be used as evidence. So I, I like to help figure out what the real story is, whatever it may be. The sheriff said there's a festival in town next week. What's that about? Oh, it's a, it's an annual thing. We have it every October. There's a fair on the Market Street. There's food, rides. We get a lot of tours from nearby states around that time. It's a, it's a good source of revenue for some of our smaller businesses here. That, of course, is uh, less important in light of the recent events. Good to hear you say that. Of course, we can't go around trying to wrap up cases based on our assumptions, whatever the situation may be. I mean, these are people's lives that ended. It's our job to figure out what really happened. So I guess what I'm saying is, you can count on me during this investigation. Thanks. I appreciate that. Because uh, everyone else is like, hmm, festival. I'm hoping the local PD will let me do the job I've been sent to do, though. I don't mean you... Te detective, I know what you mean. Honestly speaking, Sheriff Harris was an asshole. <laughs> Silence. I'm serious, he doesn't care about anything except running off home and taking it easy. The case has probably ruined his plans to relax and enjoy the festival week, and I hate people like that. Officer Watts, though, he's really sweet. I, I, I know he comes across a little like, obnoxious, but... Oh. My. God. Oh. I thought it was like a slow OMG, not a... There's someone in the... In the... Oh boy. I saw her. She was right there. Why am I seeing her? Why am I thinking of her? Are you done? See, this again, you got a little that PD Irish coffee in you? Should have skipped the coffee, buddy. Oh, Jack's Auto Repair. Hey, ironic. Jack's Auto Repair Shop. Jack's the name of the guy fixing my car. It's also the name of the guy who fixed Diane and Chris's car. Maybe fixed a little extra, if you know what I mean. My poor car. That would be dangerous. It sure would. Yeah, let's let's talk to him real quick. See what see what the deal is. We stuck here for a while. He said his name's Jack. It's a good thing we were passing by when the crash happened. Let's well, crack a lagging, Jack. What's up, dude? What's the issue with the car? Well, the headlights and the bumper's gone. You need to have them replaced. I'm gonna have to check it if I got a replacement part so I can fix it. How long will it take me to fix it? A couple days, three maybe, depending on how quickly I can get the parts. Shouldn't take more than four days at most. Oh boy. Hey dude, can you fetch me my big red wrench? It should be in a toolbox outside. I don't mind that. All right, I'll get it. You're amazing, bud, thanks. What am I paying you for? I gotta go get your tools and me. Jack got us here in that. He can steal his car. I think I'll wait for my car to be fixed instead. That's a nice car. Hey, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're gonna. This nice car here. Oof, what a beauty. What if it's Jack's? Can we get, get, get a picture? Get a selfie in it? Man, I'd love to, but I don't think Jack would appreciate me, appreciate me doing that. 
keep walking, see if there's anything else on the far side over here. It doesn't doesn't look like anything. All right. Oh, there is a sprint. Sweet. That'd be the toolbox Jack mentioned. It's locked. I need to ask Jack for the key. Jack, you didn't lock your thing. Toolbox is locked, Jack. Oh, that's weird. Why did I lock it? The key should be somewhere among the stuff behind your car. Thanks, dude. Yeah. Tutorial much, maybe. Alright, got the key. Huh, tar, shovel? What Jack uses them for? I'm guessing potholes. Yeah, sorry about this lady. Jeez, I hope she's not hurt. Doesn't Jack need your help? Talk to me when you're done. Alright. Wee. Man, I, I can't do a wee at the same time saying in Jack's voice. Oh. I I I have the key. I don't need to give you the key. You're I don't know. That open. Let's see what's in here. You said big red wrench? Right? That must be it. Yeah, that's it. I love this wrench. Thanks, bud. That's about convertible. That red convertible there. Is that yours? Yeah, man. It's a 65 Mustang. I love that ride. Got it used for pretty cheap off a guy who couldn't take care of it anymore. Look at the car's got something that keeps it running like new now. The big red wrench. The big red wrench. You know the red wrench is pretty awesome. But it's nothing as good as someone who can make it work. Me. Spend all my free time on her. Fixing her up. Making sure she runs better than new. And I keep her happy by taking her long, beautiful drives on the roads outside town. The tar and shovel. You got a shovel and some tar there. What do you use those for? Ah, that dude... I do a bit of construction work on the side sometimes, you know, fixing up driveways and stuff. Some extra cash. Detective, you here investigating Diane's murder, right? Hey, Chris, yeah. Do you have any information that could help us? I don't know about information, man. I just know that he did it. What do you mean? Chris, he killed her. Why do you say this? I, everyone can see it coming. Diane, they said she was troubled, scared of him even. Someone in this town could have done something. We all knew this could happen. But no one cared enough about them to bother interfering. How do you know all this? I don't know. Rumors around town, mostly. Did you know Chris and Diane well? Not really. People here barely did. They were not the kind to come out and make friends with the new neighbors, it looks like. They still felt like outsiders to the rest of us. And what were you doing last night? I was... Wait, what, what was I doing last night? Yeah, that, that's, that's what I asked. Oh, I, I drove a couple miles from here and drank a few beers while I enjoyed the view. At night? Yeah, the stars, man. You see? Was there anyone with you? Did you meet anyone? Nah, man, there's nothing like the pleasure of your own company sometimes. Ah, right, thanks for your help, Jack. We'll, we'll be back we'll have if we have any more questions. Of course you will. What do you mean, Jack? For your car, man. Come back when it's fixed. Get way too serious, man. Chill out. I'm gonna go take that blue wrench. I can't take the blue wrench. I should have taken it over there. The blue wrench. It's like smack someone over the head and say, Oh, she got up. Cool. Car, 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 car. No. Look at me run. I'd run so fancy free. Alright. Hey. Hi. Sure you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, surprisingly. Apologize, man. Really sorry about the crash. I, I don't know what. It's alright, especially since we're okay. It's, something else worries me, though. What was that? What happened back there? How did we hit that tree? Uh, thought I saw something. What'd you see? A ghost. I can't tell if you're joking or if you're being serious. Anyway, I don't think it's funny. Are you okay? Just generally? I mean, I don't know you, so I don't know if this is a regular thing. No offense. No, that that's okay. I, I know what you mean. Yeah, I mean, you, you collapsed back there at the crime scene, too, and then this. Yeah, I don't know. I've been, been a little dizzy all day. Maybe I just need a nap. See, this kind of stuff kind of bums me out. Uh, 
I'm just saying, if there's anything wrong, you can talk to me about it. Don't hesitate. I won't. Detective! It's raining again. <laughs> I'm gonna drive the next town for a bit. Why am I gonna drop you on your way? Alrighty. Here we are, the famous Pine View Main Street. I'm kidding, not really much to see here. Let's see if we can talk to some of the locals on the way to the hotel. Alright, we're very busy this time of day, but there should be a few people around here. Father Smith knows a lot about Pine View. It'd be a good idea to talk to him before heading to the hotel. Should be around St. Madeline's Church. Also, here's a map of Pine View so you can get around town by yourself. Aim to open to close the map. Aim to check current objectives. Oh, bigger town than I thought. Alright, so we want to go to. I already forgot where they said uh, St. Madeline's Church. We're on Main Street, I think. Or in Cliffview. People! You should come here for breakfast someday. The owner, Mark, is a pretty great guy. You mean me? That must be Mark. I sure am! My internal dialogue, I must be saying out loud, and people are answering me, and this is weird. Hey, Detective, you're here investigating the shootings, right? Yes, I am. The whole thing is so tragic. Anyway, do you want some tea, coffee? This is my cafe here. Nah, that's all right. I... Come over here if you want a pint. Keep your unhealthy habits to yourself, Alan. Too much coffee is unhealthy, too. Oh, as you may have noticed, he's already smoking a cigarette. Ignore him. He just likes to annoy me. I let it get to me all the same. Who is that? That's Alan, owner of the bar next door, and my brother. Twin brother. Now that you know it, the way we lead our lives, I don't know how he ended up as polar opposites. I know, I got all the good stuff. Uh, anyway, you had questions? How long has it been since you moved to Pineview, Mark? I was born here. My family lived here for many years before that. I left for the city when I was about 10. My dad was looking for better work. Turned as soon as I graduated about nine years back. I prefer the life here. Big cities just aren't for me. Now it's just me, my books, my coffee shop. Life is simple and I love it. Did Alan also come with you at the same time? Now Alan, he only joined me here about five years back to get a fresh start. Maybe he can tell you more about that. Do you live by yourself, Mark? Now I'm married. I've been here about six years now. And my wife and my own cat. Hey, actually. Aw, oh, it's a cute story. We're very happy for you, Mark. Does Alan also live with you? Nah, but he lives close by. Was he in last night? Yeah, I think so. I didn't check or beat him, though. Did you see Chris and Diane often? Nah, not barely. A handful of times, maybe. They came to the cafe a few times, but that was in the early days when they just moved in. They wouldn't say much to me or anyone else. Mostly kept to themselves. Of course, I couldn't say they didn't have eyes for anyone else. To put it bluntly, they looked very much in love. Is there anything else you can tell me about them? Anything that stands out? Well, I kind of identify with Chris in a way. Sounds like he moved here for the peace of mind this place provides to start a small business for himself. What business? He'd been trying to put a hotel project off the ground here, from what I hear. He had trouble getting the project approved. Maybe Father Smith can tell us more about it. He's involved in the planning committee. Hotel, festival, people getting killed, the plot thickens. Let's do some more questions. Can you tell me where you were last night? Sure, as always, I closed my place by 8, bought some supplies from the general store on the street, and went home. I assume the storekeeper will remember that. Yes, Miss Brown was in last uh, last night at the time. She should be able to confirm what I just said. And Alan, could he confirm this? I didn't come to work yesterday, took a day off. Said he wasn't feeling unwell, so he stayed home all day. Looks like that passed, luckily. He looks fine today. Anyway, I went home after that change, went for a jog as usual. Came back, took a nice long warm bath, made myself a cup of coffee, and had dinner with my wife. Then read a book for an hour or so, and was probably asleep by 10.30 as always. Man has a routine. Have you noticed anything unusual lately? Anything out of the ordinary? I can't say I have. Everyone's been pretty much the same as usual. 
All right, Mark. We'll talk later. Good talk. See you around, Detective. This is one really long cigarette. I'm gonna run while I smoke. Ah, uh, see, Alan's locked up and left. That's all right. We'll talk to him tomorrow. And yeah, maybe we should talk to him first. Hindsight, man. Hindsight. Who are you? Bread man. Grandpa's bakery. You look like Grandpa. That's Grandpa. I want a Grandpa's bakery. Is he your grandfather? Uh, no, he isn't. Is his name Grandpa then? I don't actually know. Okay then. He's just a Grandpa. He runs a bakery. Hello, uh, Grandpa? I'm not your Grandpa! And your name is... Grandpa. Mr. Grandpa, I was wondering if I could ask you a few questions. And I was wondering... Well, I can And I was wondering if I could ask Miss Brown here on a date. But wondering ain't doing, is it? Just look at her. Ooh, boy. Makes me feel 40 years younger she does. Do you ever plan to grow up, Grandpa? Any more growing up, I might die. And I plan on doing that before I ask you out. Goodness, such immaturity at his age. She likes me. I know she does. You're deluded. Woohoo! Anyway, you had questions, young man? I thought I did. How long have you lived in Pineview? Forever. Family's been here for generations. Guess I'm the last one in line now. My shop's been here for generations, too, you know, and I think I've taken real good care of it. Oh, and uh, sh she's taking real good care of me, too. Where were you last night around 12 a.m.? Where'd you think I was? Were you in the hospital? Are you making fun of me because I'm old? You'll be in the hospital when I'm done with you. I was at home, sleeping. Okay, can anyone confirm this? No, no one can. I live alone. What can you tell me about Chris and Diane? When they first moved in, Chris would come up to come in and even buy things from me. He'd come in daily, almost. Looked pretty cheerful, too. And a couple months after, they stopped coming. Last few times he came, I couldn't see that something wasn't right. Maybe trouble with his lady, I don't know. He and Diane went to church maybe a couple times. Once or twice, they came over here for coffee and donuts. There were quite a couple, I tell you. He was this quiet, nonchalant one. She an excited, electrifying energy. A classic case of opposites attracted to each other. If what people say is true, I don't know how things went so wrong so fast. But then with these things, you never can say. That was all about four to five months back. After that, I hardly saw him out here again. Have you noticed anything unusual, anything out of the ordinary in recent days? Hmm. Now, thinking about it, I actually have. Yeah. Miss Brown's been tying her hair up in a much tighter bun lately. I wonder what that means. Is she softening up, trying to hide that fact? Alright, Grandpa, you notice these things. I mean it when I say it, beautiful. I'm a passionate lover. Very passionate. Damn it, Grandpa. <laughs> um, hello, I, I was talking about the possible murders. Did you notice anything unusual leading up to that? Oh, no, I'm much the same. Can't say I did. You live by yourself? Yeah, yeah, I do. Kids left Pineview for the big city, too born here, they say. It's been many years since my wife died. So I run this shop here by myself, I live down the street pretty close by. But that's all right. I got friends here to keep me company. Officer Blunt pays me a visit every day, for instance. It's always a pleasure to meet you, Grandpa. Also, there's Miss Brown. She makes every day exciting. Please, God, give me strength. Oh, look how she flirts. All right, Grandpa. We'll talk later. Who you calling Grandpa? Oh, I'm not your Grandpa. I like him. It's just his. That's one way to make it. One way to name a bakery. Maybe kind of creepy at times, but he sure knows how to bake well. I may be old, but I'm not completely deaf, you know. Sorry, Grandpa. I'm not your Grandpa. <laughs> These donuts sure do look good. What do you mean they look good? They're the best in fine view. The best damn donuts made with Grandpa's love and warmth. Wanna buy some? Maybe later. Thanks, Gramps. 
What'd you call me? I like it. I do. Little lady. Grandpa creeping you out? That's Miss Brown. Hmm? Who is it? Oh, detective, you'll have to excuse me. I'm awfully busy at the moment. New toys just come in. I need to take stock. All right, open the second box, Johnny. No problem. We'll talk later. Hello, detective. You were blue before. Why are you yellow now when you talk to me? I don't know. This one leaves Overlook Road. I'll take me to the hotel. Oh, that's how you travel from the map. So I need to go to St. Madeline's Church, which is off of Main Street. So I got to go uh, to Main Street. So I need to overlook and then Main Street and then St. Madeline's from there. Follow me. Follow me and we'll see. Path of Illumination. Okay, maybe we are on Main Street. I didn't know that. That's pretty back there. I could run a lot faster if I didn't smoke 12 packs a day. Come back here, Father. Actually, yeah, come back. You're, you're running away. Father, Father, Father. Where are you going? Don't do it, Father. Father Smith. Ah, uh, hello, Detective Stone. Detective Stone, first time in Pineview, I assume. Yes. <clears throat> yes, only just arrived. I wanted. That's good. That's good. And what do you think of it? Do you like it here? Honestly speaking, I think I find it kind of boring. Of course, it's quite difficult for most city folk to fit in this place. They think they like the slower pace of life here. Then they're mistaken. Eventually, they try changing our town to something they're familiar with. Detective, you must agree, you wouldn't want that, would we? There's a way of life here, and I do my best to maintain that for the good of my people. Ones that are here are more than just a merry whim. I see. Anyway, Detective, you had questions? I heard Chris was trying to start a hotel here. As you're part of Pineview's planning committee, can you tell me what exactly that was about? Sure, Chris wanted to open a hotel with about 40 rooms or so. He said he wanted to keep it small in accordance with our bylaws, but even 40 was almost pushing it. These things always grow out of hand. Once the tourists started coming in, they started to see how untouched the place Pineview really was. Demand would increase, and of course, Chris wouldn't want to pass up the opportunity to cash in in like that. Regardless, we never got it to point. Chris always kept messing up his papers when he came in for approval. Now they misplace them or mess them up to the details. There were delays on the construction site, too. Guess the delays cost some money. It was all going downhill fast. And, well, this happened. So, just personal note here. We got a small town that likes to keep their peace and quiet, and they want to keep it small and un un undisturbed. We got a guy from outside who wanted to do a hotel personal small business but they were afraid that with the tourists like festivals and stuff he was gonna enlarge it and get it too big and ruin their small t I see I think somebody on the planning committee had it out for Chris maybe Diane knew who knows maybe Chris was taking it out who knows what can you tell me about Chris and Diane did you know him well not too well they came into church a couple of times then they moved into Pineview then they soon stopped coming at all they withdrew themselves from the rest of the community and can't say they helped them. Friends can help in difficult times, and it's obvious they were beginning to have real difficult times by the end. They continued to come to church. I could offer some guidance. Sometimes relationships can entangle you. But unfortunately, it had to come to this. Whatever their troubles, it looked like they made each other suffer for it. I'm sure you'll learn what most of us already know. In any case, I wish you luck in your investigation. Can you tell me where you were last night, Father Smith? I was here all night. I'd finished up some work, went to bed, 10 p.m. I'd say. 
We'll talk later, Father Smith. I'm sure we will. Mm. Yeah, right. Run. Nope, take search. <coughs> Constructed in the late 1700s, St. Madeline's Church is named after St. Madeline, patron saint of elderly animals. On her feast day of November 17th, it's customary for children to bring their animals to the church to be blessed. St. Madeline is remembered for her love of animals and nature, and is often pictured along with her favorite cat during her lifetime, Angus. Cat named Angus. A cat named Roast Beef. In a way. Yay! Run down the hill! This is why you don't smoke. All right, we're supposed to go to the hotel. Anyone else I should probably interview with today? It's getting kind of later in the evening. And even, I probably should go to the hotel. Please overlook Rose and take me to the hotel. All right, the hotel is further down Overlook Street. Check the map if you get confused. I'll see you tomorrow morning, Mark's Cafe. Sounds good. See you, officer. Take care, detective. That is a steep hill. Yo, what's up, G? You know Chris killed her, right? What? How do you know that? I don't know. That's what everyone says happened. Anyway, you play that game I gave you. Nah, not yet, man. It's 3D, man. 3D. I'm, I'm kind of in the mood for something more scary. Uh, you, you, you guys ever find it weird there's a man smoking a cigarette just standing next to you, not in the conversation? Maybe. I'd, I'd be worried. Just... Uh, uh, you said game. Life's a game. Everyone loses. Can I travel? Uh, I don't know. I mean, let's go to the hotel. I mean, they keep saying nobody's on, nobody's around right now at this time. Them trees, man. The trees have eyes. Did I go the wrong way? I went the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah, I think I was supposed to take. I was supposed to take this turn of Central Street to go to the hotel. Maybe. No. Hold up. Am I just supposed to run off into the distance? Keep going, Stone. Keep going. Oh, yeah. Actually. Yes. Oh, nice hotel. That's pretty. Uh, yeah. Like a room that uh, allows smoking. Oh, hello. I'm Mary Patterson. I run this hotel with my husband. You're Detective Stone, I presume? Yes, I am. Good to meet you. Prepared our best room on the top floor for you. This is the biggest establishment, and so it isn't too fancy, but I think you'll like it here. You must be tired. There's hot water in your room, and dinner is ready. Come on, I'll show you the way. Thank you, Miss Patterson. Hmm, already a hotel in here. <clears throat> hotel rooms, they all feel the same, don't they? Reminds me of better times. As the way to the bathroom. Mm, I don't really gotta go right now. Should I go anyway? Yeah, just go and use the toilet, man. Better go before I sleep. I don't want to get up in the middle of the night. It's kind of chilly. Ah, that feels good. That's a light switch. That's better. My clothes are in there. I can change if I want. Yeah, go ahead and get out of your work uniform, man. Oh. Just casual John. Oh, I, I, I kind of dig that. Casual, formal, stressed out, sleepwear. That's your sleepwear? <clears throat> Yeah, get in your sleepwear, man. I like how you're still smoking that cigarette. It never ends. Pine View's a beautiful place.
painfully beautiful. Too cold to go outside now. Maybe later. Said painfully beautiful. I thought he was thinking like black sunglasses. CSI moment. Like, it's a beauty to die for. Bum, bum, bum. Looks comfy. Looks like the only option. Should I go to sleep now? I don't know what else you're going to do in here, buddy. Yeah. Oh, I really need to get some sleep today. What the hell happened back here today? After all these days. Damn. No, Mark. There's no peace of mind here. The silence. You only let your thoughts speak louder. Am I dreaming? This is a horrible dream. It's so boring. That can't be good. Oh well. Oh god no. This is down the rabbit hole. No, no. I don't want to see this. I don't want to remember. I need to get out. Why am I here? I need to wake up. I need to wake up. Wake up! What the? Am I awake? I, I, I can't move. This is horrifying. What's going on? This is hopeless. I can't. Wait, what's that? What the hell? Holy sh A Abigail? Is that you? Michael. You did this. Why? How could you? I, I don't know. I. How can you live after doing something like that? You have no idea how hard it is to go on without you. Then why go on? What's the point? Oh, boy. What's the point? I, I don't know. I, I have to. For your happiness? Do you feel you deserve that anymore? Or for this case, do you think anyone even cares about it? For whom, Michael? You protect yourself from thoughts about me. You need to hide me from yourself so that you can live. Is it worth it? I no, I'm I'm not sure. I miss you, Michael. <gasps> ah! Man, dream sleep paralyzation is scary, man. Yeah, I'm trying to sound like Michael at this point. It's starting to hurt my throat. Uh, horrible night. Officer Blunt said I was to meet her at Mark's Cafe. Better get going. However, meeting at Mark's Cafe on day two of Rain Swept will be until next episode. Thank you for everyone for joining. Thanks for hanging out. For more information on what's going on, what may be, check out the description below. If you like what you saw, want to see more like this, left like button, bad subscribe, and share the video. So far, I'm intrigued. I like this. I don't know if to expect that the story right now may be a little cliche, you know, like I was saying, the hotel, small town, don't want to grow too large, they want to keep their, their peace of mind, and they'll, they'll do anything to protect it, or maybe there's something a little bit beyond that. I mean, maybe this is just kind of a uh, red herring making you think that this is where it's going, and there's actually a twist to it. That's not what you're expecting, but we'll have to see. Thank you everyone for joining me. I will talk to you guys later. Take care, folks. Bye.